let's do multi-scale context aggregation. And we are going to use dilated convolutions, which are basically Alpha's convolutions, convolutions by withholds. So you're going to see that word being interchangeably used. But, uh, let's start with a little bit of notation, because I think it's a nice way to connect the dots. Let's say you have a discrete function, and that's your image. Your image could be thought of as, an, as a discrete function from your pixel locations to your values. It could be R3, red, green, blue, or it could be R, like uh, the MNIST data set that you have. So it could be a single channel, but it's a discrete function. We are gonna define our domain for the kernel, and it's gonna be from negative R to R squared intersection with Z squared. So it's a small window in your space. Your kernel is gonna be a function from this space to R, and how many discrete filter values you're gonna have, the discrete size is gonna be 2R plus one. So it's gonna 2R plus the zero number that you have. And you have uh, a height and a width, and that's gonna give you a square. You can think of a discrete convolution. I think all of us know what convolution is because some of us have math backgrounds, almost all of us. So this is how we remember convolutions. So that's a nice way to uh, connect the dots. You want to know the pixel value after the convolution at this particular pixel, and then you're gonna evaluate your function, your input, uh, around the neighborhood of your pixel, and then multiply it by the kernel. Mm -hmm. Another way to think about dilated convolution is that you're gonna multiply your t by an, by an L. That's your rate. How far to the left and how far to the right you want to look and how much you are, how many pixels you're skipping. And Atrus convolution is actually the algorithm was first designed for wavelet decompositions and they were using dilated convolution. But nowadays people just use Atrus convolution. Uh, so that's not a big deal. What you can do with Atrus convolutions or dilated convolutions is that you can have exponentially expanding receptive fields. So what is a receptive field? First, how are you going to get exponentially expanding? You can get it this way. You start with your input image. You have a dilation of, let's say, 2 to the power 0. So your dilation factor is 1. So this is just the usual convolution. And you dilate it with a, you convolve it with a 3 by 3 filter. Then you take the output of that. Now you increase your dilation rate. You make it 2. Then you go to the next layer. You make it 2 to the power 2. That's going to be 4. 2 to the power 3. That's going to be 8, etc. You get the idea. And I promise to give you the exact definition of a receptive field. And this is where we are going to see the exact definition. If you have a particular pixel, P, the set of elements in your original image that modify the value of uh, this pixel is the receptive field. So is this clear? So you take a pixel at the layer that you are currently at, at the feature map of layer I plus one, and then you go back to your original image and try to identify which pixels are modifying this value or which pixels are modifying, are responsible for modifying this value. So Theodore is asking two to the power I is the dilation rate from before? Yes, exactly. So that's the dilation rate. So this this like star sub two to the I is just a um, actress convolution with that rate. Exactly. So notation wise, this is the convolution with this rate. And to be precise, this is the actual receptive field size after doing these operations one after another. Uh, rate of one, rate of two, rate of four, rate of two to the power i. And that's going to give you this receptive field. So that's the window of your image that you're looking at. And the other thing is that because you're sliding these windows, you're going to take a look at all of the pixels in your original image eventually. And then I'm guessing we have to do normal stuff with padding or zero padding or like reflections on the boundaries. Yes, of course. And that kind of just depends on what you want to do. Exactly. Okay. And this should answer your question. This is the receptive field for the first layer. This is the receptive field for the next layer. And this is the receptive field for the layer after. This one has a rate of a dilation rate of one. Now this one has a dilation rate of two. And this one has a dilation rate of four. Any other question? And yes, the recursion matters. 
we're going from one layer to the next one and we're looking at windows of three by three so these are all the pixels that are gonna affect your second layer these are all the pixels that are gonna have an effect on a pixel in your third layer etc so if you change any of these the pixel value in the third layer is gonna change and that's gonna give you your receptive field but this is powerful stuff dilated convolutions uh let's see how you can use it in a neural network architecture your dilation factors all of the convolutions are three by three except for the last one the dilation factors are going to be one dilation rates are going to be one one two four eight sixteen and then one etc some of the layers are going to be activated by your ReLU, except for the last one and you can take a look at the receptive field. This is three by three. That one is five by five. Uh, this is five by five because you have a three by three convolution and then the next one is also, also three by three. That's gonna give you a five by five. Now this one is where you're gonna get your nine and then 17 by 17, 33 by 33, etc. And you're gonna have two architectures in terms of your channels. You can have a basic channel and that's going to be the same channel number of channels for all of your layers or you can have different channels 2 2c 2c 4c 8c 16c etc that's cool this is a practical issue you try to train this network and then uh, sometimes you don't get good results when you go to the computer you have a brilliant idea you see it's beautiful but then you take it to the computer and things are not going to converge. With deep learning, you guys have to be very patient. Perhaps you have to play around with your initialization. Uh, perhaps you have to make some modifications to your activation. So these small changes are really important when it comes to deep learning. And we're going to see it here as well. One way to initialize is to use the identity initialization. If you are not using res residual connections, these identity initialization is uh, behaving similarly to a residual connection and it's going to make your uh, layers closer to identity at least initially during training what you do is you take the channel dimensions let's say channel dimension a for the input channel dimension b for the output that has to be a one if these two are the same otherwise it's a zero so that's an indicator function and the other one is when you come to the pixel uh, you're gonna have an identity if you're on the diagonal of your kernel otherwise it's a zero i think we are over time i'm gonna stop here for those of you who have questions you can stay and ask um, some of your classes you can take now i have a, a question um so the goal with this uh this dilated convolutions is to increase the receptive field like we that's we in this figure C like because we see that the receptive field is almost the entire uh, original image that's a good thing is that correct yes so it's gonna give you more of the global context of the image okay and so what um, what's the downside of like between figures A and B wh why don't we just increase the uh, the rate so that we, we get up to a higher receptive field faster, if that makes sense. So one way to increase your receptive field is to stick to three by three convolutions, and then uh, you keep repeating it in your layers. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're gonna have a receptive field as big as the original image, but then now your network is gonna be very deep. Mm -hmm. And the deeper your network, the harder it is gonna be to train it. Mm -hmm. The other problem that that approach is gonna have is, uh, uh, so you are gonna reduce the resolution if you use a stride. And that's gonna end up with you only picking up the global objects and you're gonna end up with a lower resolution. The deeper you go in your network, probably you're gonna have a bunch of strides and then that's gonna give you a lower resolution and then you have to up resolve it to the original. If you go very deep with three by three convolution. Mm -hmm. So atrus convolutions are going to help you go less deep. And, yeah, uh, and get that larger receptive field earlier. Yes, you get it earlier and then you, uh, you don't lose much local information. But so what's preventing you from having like a stride of, or sorry, a, a rate of like nine 
at the first layer so that we, we jump right up to a receptive field, a larger receptive field, uh, I guess. I, the way that this is working is really smart. Your first one has a dilation factor of one. The next one is double that. But if you make it triple or four times, you're going to end up with a bunch of holes here. Yeah, that makes sense. You'd be like losing too much information, sort of. Yes. So that's exactly what we were discussing with the other. Okay. If suddenly it's too big, then you're going to have a bunch of holes. Okay. That your convolutions are not looking at. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.